Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the Chess.com Rapid Rating Climb series where I am trying to get to at least 2000 Rapid Elo. And if you haven't seen the other videos in the playlist, go check them out. It'll be linked below somewhere. I don't know. You'll be able to find it. It'll be in a playlist. And yeah, we'll start today with E4 because, E4 because that is what I have always played. Best by test is I believe what Bobby Fischer described it as. And our opponent plays my opening against me, the Karo Khan. And of course, there's loads of lines you can play against this as white. You can play knight f3, you can play knight c3, you can play d4. There's also a line where it goes d3 and you try and trade queens or like d3, knight d2, which I think is called the Brea. But a lot of those lines transpose apart from the Brea because that's just weird. Why would you, why, why would you trade queens like that? I instead like this move called the U U E U. I don't know how to just how to say it. Attack. And the point is, this is a way to fight against the French defense. And the French and the Caro are very similar because it's about playing e6 or c6 to support a d5 pawn push. But when White takes, you don't have to take back with the Queen like in the Scandinavian. You can take back with a pawn. And so this is a way that I often play against the French, known as the Horwitz attack. Loads of videos in my channel on that, because I love it, <laughs> and I have great success in it. And the whole point is to gambit the pawn, but and you, you, you get a strong um, dark squared bishop on the long diagonal. But you're going to win this back, and there's very little black can do about it. So we add some attackers. I've actually just messed up the move order. The knight is supposed to go to e2 and then g3. So, <laughs> yeah, I've played that wrong. I will show you in the game analysis afterwards what I was supposed to do. But this is fine. You can go h3 and g4 and go bishop g2 to add another attacker. And it's very difficult for um, black to actually defend the pawn. There is an idea of e3 open up the bishop's attack on c2 but you can just take with the d pawn and then the queen defends c2 so that is not a problem and it doesn't really matter that we're throwing our king side pawns forward with h3 g4 to go bishop g2 because not only do we potentially have g5 attacking the knight but we're going to castle queen side anyway and h5 is a good move h5 is a very good move because it stops g4 Honestly, we might have to gambit the pawn entirely. Because, like I said, I just completely <laughs> messed up my opening move order. Because I wasn't thinking. That's not ideal. Like I said, I'll make a quick note. Just to... um, Just to show how the opening is supposed to go. Because when I play it properly, I have very good success. I didn't play it properly, but it's fine. This kind of thing happens, especially in faster time controls. You mix up a move order because the queen does eventually end up on e2. And in the French defense version of it, the queen goes to e2 immediately. So I kind of just mix the move order up because in the Karo Khan version, the bishop comes to f5, whereas in the French, there's a pawn on e6. So the bishop can't get out to help defend. So we are just a pawn down in all honesty and it's not that easy to win it back so 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 how are we gonna do this we could just go g3 bishop g2 i honestly don't see a better plan also if we go bishop g2 then g4 is on the cards because after something like takes takes the bishop defends the rook not immediately, but in the future. As long as I can win this pawn back, I don't mind. Even if it's taken us longer than it really should have. And our, our knight on g1 is a bit eh, out of place. Because like I said, it's supposed to make this kind of manoeuvre. And it's difficult to develop the knight now. But once we win this pawn, which I think is pretty much inevitable after bishop g2... 
I think we should should be in good stead, and we can get our knight to f3 to get it into the game. And you know, we always have this long uh, diagonal with the bishop, which is kind of the whole point of the opening. So I'm not really concerned. Not really concerned. Besides, every every now and again, you are going to make a mistake in the opening. So you've got to learn how to adapt your ideas. And that's part of the problem with just 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 memorizing an opening. Because if you just memorize move orders, then you don't understand the point behind it. And if your opponent plays something weird that you've never seen before, or you mess up a move for whatever reason, then you're screwed if you don't understand why you're playing the moves. But in this opening I do. I understand what the purpose is, so I know I need to go after the e4 pawn. Our opponent might be threatening to take the knight to get rid of it to get rid of an attacker. But I don't really care, because then our dark square bishop is insanely strong. So I'm actually going to invite him to take. Now, if he does take, I think I'm going to take back with the d pawn just to open my rook up and then go for c4 to try and stop any ideas of b5 in the future, which again is a very common idea in this opening. Of course, if bishop takes, we can take back with the bishop. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I feel like I can get a bit more play by taking with the d-pawn, playing c4, maybe even going a4, more likely king b1 to defend a2 if the queen comes out to a5, which is likely. So like the line I'm expecting is bishop takes c3, d takes c3. No, nope, queens don't move like that. Queen a5, king b1, and then... What are we doing then? What is the plan? Maybe Queen E three to go knight E two or even F three to take back with the knight and then get the knight to E five maybe. But I, I would like to play g4, but I want my opponent's castle first. So yeah, we're going to take with, this, with the d-pawn as planned. I'm expecting queen a5, and then we pretty much have to play king b1. We could play a4, but a4, b5, I don't see a need to give black that much play. To be fair, we could technically let him take on a2 because the bishop defends the a1 square. We could set a trap with rook d4 because if queen takes a2, then rook a4 traps the queen. That's actually not a bad idea. So we are also putting more pressure on e4, but we're not actually threatening to take it. Also, the rook's vulnerable to moves like c5, so putting the rook in the center of the board in this kind of situation is kind of unnecessary. It's just asking for trouble. c4 looks like a good move, opening the bishop up. I think he's going to castle queenside, though, which makes it more difficult to attack him. Now, rook d4, maybe I like more now, because if he castles queen side, then rook a4. So, rook d4, castle queen side, rook a4, attacking a7, forcing queen b6, well, or queen c5, to keep an eye on the pawn. Let's say queen b6, because it just looks more solid. And then maybe c4, trying to play bishop d4. If c5 is played, then it weakens the light squares. And then f3, 
And then the yeah, it, the queen side looks very weak. I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to do it. Obviously, we're not setting the trap of queen takes a2 anymore because the king defends a2. But I think this is quite a practical decision. I think because um, the problem, the thing is, if he goes king side, then we go g4 to just blast open the king side, right? That's obvious. But our opponent also knows that. So I think he's trying to castle queen side. But if we can try and deter him from going queen side with moves like rook d4, rook a4. And by the way, the rook is safe-ish because there's no dark squared bishop to attack it. And these knights geometrically are going to take some time to attack the rook. This knight needs two moves to attack the rook. He needs to get onto a dark square and then like reroute. But there's no easy square for it to go to to attack the rook even. And because I, I talk about this in many videos, but this pattern of there being one diagonal space between the knight and the square it wants to go to requires four moves for it to actually get there. So if this knight wanted to attack this rook, You'd have to go to d5, c7, and b5. And that's the quickest way for the knight to access the rook, which obviously takes forever. So, and th there's no easy way for this knight to do it either. e5, I feel like that helps our cause. It just looks weakening. It looks like a weakening move. Now, we don't actually have to play rook a4. We could play rook d6, but queen c5, queen d2, king e7, and then the rook is kind of trapped. So if we go rook d6, queen c5, queen d1, then if queen e7, we have rook d2. Again, rook a4. Rook a4 is nice. But the rook is kind of stranded. And it's also vulnerable to knight b6 and knight c5 once the queen moves. And a7 is defended by the rook because black hasn't castled yet. However, if rook d6, could black just castle? Hmm. Yeah, maybe he can. I'm just trying not to get the rook trapped with rook a4. It's the only concern. Rook a4. Queen b6. But then we can actually go back to b4. Okay, I think we have to take the plunge. I think I should take the plunge. That offers a queen trade, so c4 looks logical to decline the queen trade. Yes, it kind of traps our rook, but our rook actually has the a3 square, which looks really awkward, but it's not actually that bad, I don't think. Obviously, I don't want to trade queens because we're down a pawn, so let's go c4. Don't mind this, don't mind this. And this opens up our bishop to attack e5 as well, which is obviously very useful. Hmm. Don't know exactly what Black's plan is. I think that kind of just helped our position because we wanted to go c4 anyway. Like that was part of the idea to open the bishop up and secure control of d5 and b5. And besides, if the knight tries to put pressure on the rook with a move like knight b6 or knight c5, then it relinquishes control over the e5 square. So once we save the rook with a move like rook a3 or rook b4, then e5 is under attack. And these pieces are glued to the defense of e4, because if one of them moves, then we're just going to take. This is looking up. 
this is starting to look up. We also have the idea of Bishop A3 to cut black off from kingside castling. But I kind of don't want to do that because I want him to castle kingside so that G4 can be played. The only problem with our position is this knight. This is the issue. We need to try and get this knight out. And it might require a move like Queen E3 to give the knight the E2 square. Because if this knight can get to C3, then we're going to be winning this pawn. And then I think we're just better. Now obviously it would have been a lot easier if I hadn't messed the opening up and the knight had a far easier way out. Again, F3 is a move to try and gambit the pawn entirely. Which isn't actually bad, because then e5 is going to be under attack from the bishop, the queen, and the knight. So that's an option. And if he was to play a move like e4, then we have ideas like knight g5 or knight d4. So I kind of like this idea. Just gambiting the pawn entirely. Because yeah, he stops the move queen e3 now. Because he's just he's just going to trade queens with us. Which we really can't allow. Bishop a3 is a move, but then queen d4. We do have c5 opening up an attack from the rook. Which almost traps the queen, but she does have the c3 square. If she goes to c3, then bishop b4 traps the queen. So here, here, here. She can also go to d5. And then if c4, then the queen just goes back to e6. So I feel like we're just weakening our own king, our own queen side like that. I'm not worried about the move b4 at all, I don't think. So I'm going to go f3. <clears throat> he could ignore us and let us take, which might be a better way of going about it to keep the e-file closed. Is b4 an issue? g4 is also a move now, by the way, because we have more support for the g4 square. B5. If takes, queen takes, then we can put a second pawn on C4 to block the diagonal. But if B5 takes and pawn takes attacking the rook, oh, maybe we just have rook A6. Because if a6 or a5 is played, then it's a bit scary. But rook a6 stops those ideas. And our queen maintains an attack on b5. So it makes it difficult for this queen to attack the rook without dropping the b5 pawn. And if the b5 pawn is taken by the queen, then a6 is defended. So okay, I don't think b5 is a threat. I kind of just trusted that it wasn't. But after calculating, I think my instinct was correct. Especially because, like I said... I think black needs to castle queenside, because if black castles kingside, then g4 is pretty deadly, paired with this bishop's long scope on the diagonal. I wouldn't want to be castling kingside as black here. That seems like suicide, especially because he doesn't need to yet. But now we're trying to blow open the center a bit. Maybe he actually does need to castle somewhere, but it's not really obvious where he should be going. Okay. Might be six. Relinquishes the defender of e5. The queen does defend e5 for now. Um, just checking bishop a3. But I don't think it's that good. We might just have to play rook a3. Which isn't pretty. But the rook is safe. Just thinking a little bit. Yeah, I think rook a3. Just maintaining the pressure on the a-file. 
don't like the look of the move, but I don't think I have anything better. Bishop a3. Queen d4. We don't have c4 because he can take the rook with the knight. So bishop a3. Queen d4. We do have rook a5. Queen c3. Rook c5. This is like a ring around a rosy. Knight d7. Attacking the rook. Bishop b2. Queen b4. This is really ring around a rosy now. I think we lose the rook there. Yeah, I think that's too dangerous to try and play bishop a3. Because... No longer have that square for the rook. But bishop a3, queen d4, rook b4. Maybe that works. Then c5 is actually an idea. The problem is the rook on a3 is just so passive. So bishop a3... Queen can only go to d4. And then rook b4. I wish there was a way to trap the queen a bit better. I would love to play b4. Well, no, that doesn't really do anything. Because the bishop cuts off the retreating on the diagonal. So I think bishop a3, queen d4, rook b4. Queen c3. But then I have um, pawn c5. I mean, if the knight moves, I take on b7. And if the queen takes on c5, then I have rook takes e4. Or do I? There, 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 there. Here, can the queen just take? I'm going to play it. I'm going to play it. I'm going to have to trust my instinct. It feels like the right move. Don't know if I'm blundering anything obvious. I, but I, I think I'm okay. I think the queen will struggle to make any meaningful infiltration. I like rook a5 more because it attacks e5, but the queen defends e5 and can go to c3 to attack the rook. I don't see what we do there. Well, the rook needs to move to b4 or a5, but a5, queen c3. b4 also queen c3, but the rook is defended on b4. If this... I think we have c3 to deflect the queen. God, I wish I could get this knight out. <laughs> and also get a rook to d1 and it would be beautiful. It would be so beautiful. We're not quite there. We're playing some really strange chess here. Very, very strange. But I, th I think, concretely calculating it, it looks like it works. Looks like it works. See where he puts the queen. If he, if he finds queen c3, I think that's the move. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the rook's under attack. But what about c3? Because then the knight's going to hang. Maybe his plan is here.
Am I just losing a rook? There's also an idea of going to d6 to pin the rook to the bishop. Oof. <sighs> Maybe I've blundered. Maybe this whole plan doesn't work. Ooh, but the, there is bishop b2. But then queen c5. Maybe we sack the exchange, take here, and then take e5. Hmm. c3, queen c5. Ooh, what about rook b5 takes, takes a4? If he takes like... Well, I think we have to take like this and then to block off the diagonal. And then if he takes like that, we take like this. But then the queen might be overloaded. C3, queen c5, rook b5. This is a critical moment. Queen takes a3. Rook takes b6, a4. Ooh, can we play B4? Hmm. Oh no, because then this comes with check if I play C3. I can't do that. I think I need to give the rook up. Yeah. God, yeah. I had to do that. So here, we're just going to have to take the knight, aren't we? But this isn't all that bad, actually. Because we're going to take here. And then I'm going to play knight, depending on where the bishop goes. If the bishop goes to g6, I can't play knight f3. Because our bishop relinquishes control of e4. But we can take on e5 with the bishop. Maybe we should play a4 first, to stop him playing a4. But if he goes a4, it's not actually the end of the world. Our bishop does a good job of defending the king, especially the a1 square. Some risky chess. Some really risky chess from me. Um, this is not very professional. <laughs> no need to do all this. But I kind of like the chaos of these gambit lines. I do enjoy the chaos. I feel like it suits my play style. Okay, yeah, so bishop g6 makes a lot of sense. Can we go knight f3 anyway and give the pawn up and play knight takes e5? You know, I think that might actually be the best way of going about it. Because I don't really want to play bishop takes because I need the bishop on the queen side. Knight f3, bishop takes e4. Knight e5, bishop takes g2, queen takes g2. Okay, he does trade a bishop off, but I think this is the best plan. I think. If you also open up the e file, could be useful. And we're forcing our opponent to make a decision with the king if we can open the e-file as well. Because he's going to have to castle somewhere. If it goes queenside, it's probably safer. Whoa. That's an odd move. Did not expect that. Well, if knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes on e5. We're attacking g7. 
if he castles, then we go g4. And if he plays h5... So maybe we should go h5 first to stop him going h5. Well, I think we need to take this pawn. Attacking g7. Whoa, f6 can't be good. No way. Can we go bishop d6? And like c5? Bishop... Bishop d6, a4. Do we have e5? Try and blast open the king. King can always castle queen side. Then the attack's gone on our queen side and we can go c5. We could just retreat back to b2. Bishop d6 also gives the d4 square for his queen. I don't like that. I don't want his queen on d4. This looks incorrect though. Like, f6 is so weakening. We do have a minute though, so my explanations might not be as great. And my moves might also not be as great from now. But needs must. Needs must. a4 is expected. If he doesn't play a4, I think we play a4. Hmm, yeah, so he queenside castles, but now his attack's kind of gone. So is ours. Let's go a4. I want to make this move work. Only problem is it feels like my position isn't ready to play that yet. Hmm. Let's just add another defender. If I do play this, he has to take with the pawn. Opens his bishop up, though. We are low on time here. This is kind of not ideal. I think the bishop might be better placed on c3 to put pressure on a5. I need to defend the g3 pawn, which is why I played queen f3. And we maintain lots of defense on e4. I think bishop c3 is probably my next move. I'd like to induce b6 to weaken the light squares. I'd also like to play king b2. The bishop now also covers the d2 square so the rook can't infiltrate. It's an odd move. Don't know what the king's doing there. Um. Let's give a check, see how he responds. Queen here, maybe... Maybe c5? Hmm... Does c5 work? Is it good? I don't think so. I'd love to get my queen on the 5th rank, but I don't see how. don't see how I'll do that. Um... Honestly, there's not many moves here. <laughs> I'm playing a few weird moves just because I need to move. A5 is a target though. And the queen is currently tied down to the, the defense. Which is a bonus. Maybe h4 to open up this diagonal for the bishop. Could be useful. 
Could be useful. Like I said, I really want to get the queen on the fifth rank. Now we could actually take and then go bishop a5. I want to keep the queens on the board though. So I'm actually going to drop back to f2. Now he can't play queen b6 and we keep an g3. What a good idea might be. Let's go bishop f3 to cover d1. And then go rook e3 and queen e1 to attack a5 and maybe induce b6. Whoa, really? Really? This looks incorrect. It really does. Because e5 is going to come with a lot of venom if we can play it now. Because the light squares are weak. And our queen's also attacking c5, so this queen has got a lot of defensive duties. We're also pressuring h5 with the bishop. This pawn is pinned, but I don't think v4 is really playable. Because it just here, here doesn't look right. b6. Here you can just take. Let's continue with the plan. We just need to make some moves. Okay, weakening, very weakening. Now we're going to revert back to going queen f3 to set up a battery and make e5 dangerous. So now we've, in, we've induced some weaknesses. This bishop can find a new job as well, probably over here. I'm going to grind this down. Again, we're pressuring h5. This is not an easy endgame. The problem with going bishop d2 is... Oh, okay, now the queen can't go there. Is he threatening to take? Oh, is he threatening to take it? Oh, no. Oh, have I blundered? Move. I feel like I've blundered. I think he can just take it. He doesn't. Yo, my game is frozen. Game, please, please. I'm going to have to refresh the page. <laughs> what the hell? My game's fr... My game is frozen. What's going on? What's going on? I don't know what it's doing. Why? Why is it being like this? It was a good job my opponent isn't moving. Okay, I need to cons I need to keep thinking about the chess. I need to keep thinking about the chess. This is a horrible position, man. This bishop, I can't attack it. I really can't. Which is a problem. Um Is that a good move? I don't know. Oh my god. Maybe he's going queen d1. You guys can see that my game is being really weird, right? I hope it's not just... <laughs> I hope it doesn't just seem like me moaning because I've got a bad position. <laughs> oh. It just crashed. Okay, we're back. Okay, it's being normal. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Our opponent hasn't moved, thank God. Now we're back in the zone. Now we're back in the zone.
Maybe setting up these was actually really good for him, but we'll see. He might be worried about us taking this, but he always has rook h8. Then we do have g4, but then he just trades, probably. I don't like that. Don't like. Ooh. Why does that look wrong? Okay, I'm going to go g4. And then I'm going to take back the queen. I don't know why that just looks like an odd move. I don't really understand what the bishop's doing there. Hmm. Oh, that's a nice move. I missed that. Ah, that's not good. That is really not good. You might force a queen trade. Hmm. I can't find any tactics to win his queen either. Which is what I'm currently looking looking for because it is undefended. But the queen's on a dart. The king's on a dart square. So moves like. You know, Siddiquim was on a6, then e5, followed by bishop b7 would win the queen, but king's on a dart square. We do have ideas of bishop takes a5, b takes a5, queen takes c5 check. I don't think they work. I might try and play rook d2. I was worried about that. I think now we have to push. I think we have to. He's got to take with the pawn, so at least it shuts down the file. But e4 is coming. He might be forcing a trade of queens. What about this? Then queen d4 check. Damn. Oh, I don't like this. Um, ugh, I, I don't see what else to do other than trade queens. I don't see any other option. Bishop a5 didn't work. Did not work. Okay, we're just going to have to try and hold this now. It is holdable, maybe. Maybe, maybe. But it's not going to be easy or fun. Ooh, but what about... I think we've got to take the pawn. It's a pass pawn. We have to take it. Even though we have to trade a pair of rooks. Bishop as um, um, rook h2 to attack c2 isn't playable because our bishop defends that square. g7 is also under attack. Okay, this isn't completely horrible. We have the bishop pair against a rook and bishop. We have an extra pawn, but our extra pawn is kind of meaningless because of the structure. We might have to play for c3, b4, but that looks very dubious. His king is a bit trapped. But there's no way to actually mate him or anything. That's a good move. Trying to get in here. Bishop d1. At least it holds on to both pawns. Maybe we can move our king back to c1 to defend it. Hmm. I mean, we're not playing for a win. We're playing for a draw. Realistically. Can't be cocky or anything here. We just have to try not to get destroyed. But this pawn is weak. That's a plus. Our king is pretty safe. 
And I think our opponent's going to have to try and prove that he can win this, and it's not easy. So, also finding moves for us isn't easy. He's going to go g6, so that the bishop defends the pawn. I don't want to trade bishops. I don't see what that does. It stops bishop d1, actually. Hmm. Kind of running out of moves. But as long as our dark squared bishop can move. Okay, he's just improving his king. Whoops, that's not pre-move. Oh. That's not good. That's not good. Why have I done that? Let me think. We could try and... No, that doesn't even work. Okay. I think this saves it. It's a bit worried about the alignment of the bishops there. But moves like this as well. If I move the dark square bishop to the wrong square... I was thinking of moves like bishop f3 check, but then the bishop just returns and is defended, and he comes out of a pawn, so not good. Now we'll save the pieces. Rook e5 is met with bishop f4. Or bishop, I mean, you could go bishop f6. But I don't really want to play g5, because then this bishop lives on f5 forever. He might try and zugzwang us. But as long as our bishop can stay quite strong on the dark squares, we might have a chance. Our king isn't all that good, though. Again, our piece is tangled up a bit. But the bishops do cover a lot of squares. Now, a g5 would be a mistake, I think. Because then the king could infiltrate. We're currently covering all infiltration squares. And if he goes g5, then the pawn becomes weak. Because the bishop won't be able to defend it. Because it'll be on a dark square. Our pawn may also become weak, but if we can trade these pawns, like if these pawns get traded, I think it's an easy hold. Easy-ish, because I think we can probably even trade the bishops off. And because these pawns are on dark squares, they'll be too weak for our opponent to be able to win. So the goal is to trade off these pawns. I think that helps us. I really do. Hmm. Problem is, king e5, then the pawn falls. I'm expecting rook d6, and we'll play bishop e2 like last time. <laughs> what does that do? What does that do? Is he trying to go like this? Maybe. Oh, maybe bishop f1, yeah. I missed that move. We only have one move. I don't know why I'm thinking. Ah, that's nice. That's a real nice idea. I completely missed that. Mm. I think this is just completely lost now. Our only chance might be trying to win these pawns, but this is a very quick pawn once this falls. 
just just rook g2 right just rook g2 my king can't defend yep rook g2 I'm hoping for king g6, and then bishop e5, yeah, but he does have that. We can't go back because his rook will defend it. This is not good. Okay, I'm going to play this. <sighs> I'm going to try and go c3. I feel like this is too little too late, though. I don't think this, this is anything meaningful. We've got to try it, obviously, but I just don't see it being substantial enough to actually cause problems. At least now we're targeting the pawns with the bishop. <laughs> King c2, rook f1. It's not good. B4 takes. No, we don't have anything. We don't have anything. Yeah, and then he has that. Then you can just push, right? This is completely lost. This is completely lost. We've got to keep trying though. Can't give up. Gotta go B4. Take. I wanna see this. This is a good try, I think. Might be able to trick him a bit. <sighs> mm, yeah, but he can do that. Bishop c5, king c6. Don't think we have anything better. This is so we're relying on tricks here, which is not where you want to be, but we don't really have a choice. Yeah, if he takes this, then it's game over, because the king can just sit on c6 forever. I need to see a4 or g3 or anything. Yeah, but if he takes, it's over. We, we, we just have no firepower now. We have nothing. You can just push. Yeah. That's tough, man. That's really tough. I completely messed up the opening. Hmm. Let's get into the game review. Okay, that wasn't the best of games, and I know the video's already gone on quite long, so I won't... I won't spend ages on the game analysis. If you have watched this far, by the way, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, the whole idea 
is to go no not bishop e2 knight e2 and then after bishop f5 knight g3 bishop g6 h4 h5 and then queen e2 and you're just going to win the pawn back and i get these positions all the time and i absolutely love it but queen e2 first is just bad and the computer agrees so we do play yeah you wanted g3 first to go bishop g2 we play the right ideas and he takes we take back with the d pawn go knight bd7 rook d4 is a mistake though it does want f3 ah, i should have stuck with my gut should have stuck with my gut Queen c5, bishop, bishop a3 straight away. The queen comes to d4. Ah. This is a tough line to play as a human, though. You also... What about knight b6? Knight e2, queen goes back. Okay. I guess this is a way to play. But yeah, this is um not good. Here, I need to go rook a3. I need to go rook a3. But bishop a3. Apparently the move is to take here and go like this. Oh, wait, no, there's knight c3. And you win the queen back. Wow, I missed that. And he did. Now bishop b2. Oh, I have a draw. Unless he finds this knight a4 idea. Because like this, we just repeat. I didn't spot that. Didn't spot that. a5 is a miss, though. It's bishop b2, and then we take. And this wasn't that bad. I actually quite liked this position when we got here. And knight f3 is a good move. Knight e7 is also good. Taking f6 again. Thought was a mistake. And bishop d6 is the best. And I was worried about queen d4. But I just have rook d1. Why was I worried about that? I was irrational. And I think I got worried because I was so low on time. A4. I should have played e5 straight away to trade the weakness off but okay i think we played this in a decent manner this did make sense the way that i went about some of these moves here i just hung the pawn but i'm, I'm just losing the pawn in h4 queen d6 bishop f3 we, we're both making mistakes to be fair but queen f4 and here thought it was game over because he's forcing a queen trade bishop d2 why didn't i do that why was i worried oh because i went e5 first and that opened up the option of queen d4 of bishop d2 so that was a losing mistake here i thought i had chances i don't know if i ever got it to a drawn position I think he just had to find the correct configuration. And although it took him some time, he did. I don't think we ever had drawing chances. And yeah, his idea of um, putting the bishop on g2 to go through f1 and e2 was a very nice idea. And yeah, we, we didn't have any play on the queen side. We had to try, of course. Here I was hoping for was i hoping for i was hoping for this and then this but just king c6 and the light squares he can just set up a blockade very easily that's a tough game that puts us back a bit in our climb to 2000 but i'm confident we can recover next game and i hope this was at least quite educational um even though I didn't play very well, and I messed the opening up completely. <laughs> um, but with that being said, uh, if you stick around to the end, you're the, you are the man. You're the man. Put in the comment section, the man, if you stuck around this long, because 
you are the man. And I'll see you in the next video.